Hey everybody, today on Rotto Runs Through, we're taking a look at Forever Home. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to my dog shelter, everybody, where I am trying to train a whole bunch of pooches so that they can find Forever Homes in the city, the suburbs, the countryside, or at foster homes. I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run through, which means instead of competing against my wife, Jen, I am going to be worrying about this deck of cards that will stymie me every step of the way and wish me luck and don't worry if you're curious how this plays as a multiplayer game you're in luck because i've also separate from this filmed a two-player run through of the game and you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes if you would like to see how it works as a competitive title and uh bear in mind i'm only showing the standard version of the game in that run through whereas here i'm showing the advanced version so between these two run throughs you're getting to see everything the game offers so the situation is I've already got two dogs. Uh, coincidentally, I happen to get two of these little uh, Lhasa Shih Tzu uh, Mutt type critters. And I was able to put them anywhere I wanted on the grid. I chose this because I also have two training cards. I will score one point if I get two dogs of one type and one dog of a different type in a layout like this. And as you might imagine, I'm very close to doing that. I'm also trying to get two dogs of the same type in this little step pattern. That won't score me any points, but it will let me rehome both of those dogs. The getting um, this training done will score me one point and let me rehome one of these three dogs. And so that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm also looking to the future because there are these other training cards I could grab as well. And there are other dogs that I could bring into the shelter so I could start training them. And finally, as part of setup, there were randomly selected a suburb and a countryside card that changes up ways I score by uh, getting dogs rehomed there. The foster home card is always the same. Uh, so any dog I send to a foster home is worth a point. But in this game, if I can, by the end of the game, have to the countryside three of one type and two of another, I'll score nine points. And I can do that for every full house uh, in the countryside I've got. Over here in the suburbs, I'm trying to get the hound dogs and the collies. And I think these are boxers and then one of a different type to get seven. But there were other cards. The um, countryside could have been trying to get two different pairs instead of a full house for fewer points. Or it could have been, you know, three of a kind, etc., etc., same kind of thing for the suburbs, different combinations. Now, like I said, the foster home is always the same, and the city is usually the same, but it's just a question of how they score, um, whether I get up to higher point potentials uh, at higher thresholds or lower point potentials. So anyway, every time you play, there's going to be a fair bit of variety based on which of these cards end up getting randomly drawn. And oh, by the way, these cards are just full of the most wonderful dog art you you have ever seen. Uh, this game just warms a Jen's heart so much. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's start playing. So on your turn, you get to do three actions. And those can be any... Com I'm sorry, two actions. But they can be any combination of three different things. For my two actions, I could get another dog and put them in my training uh, shelter. I could get another training card. So I've got another target I'm going for. Or I could take any dog that's currently anywhere in my training and shift them one space in any direction, including diagonals. So I'm going to do two of those three actions. And I think the first action I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another one of these little Sharpe types. And so I've got to put it anywhere on the grid. Now, if I put them in any of these spaces, I will trigger an action. The, uh, putting it here means I can have any other dog move as far as I want up or down or left or right or diagonally. Or I could swap a dog from my shelter with one of the ones out here. Or I could swap a training card with one of the ones out here. Now, I'm not going to activate any of those powers. And by the way, this is the advanced side of the board. The regular side of the board uh, is functions the same. It just doesn't have all those extra options. So anyway. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this here. And you're saying, why did I do that? Look, I needed to have a different uh, type of dog there. Well, uh, as soon as I take a dog, a new one gets replaced. We just draw from the lovely Forever Home bag and put a new one out here. And okay. And now for my second action, I could take another dog. Remember, I could take one of these. I'm going to snag this and it goes in my hand. And now... 
I have done the two actions I get to do of the three types, but as a free action, if I've completed one or more of my training cards, I can score them. I have completed this card because as you can see, I've got three matching, which means I'm going to score one point and two of these dogs are now going to go to their forever homes. Alrighty. And, um, by the way, a new card should come out after that was done. So, I mean, this was nice, but, um, you know, and they're both only worth one point, but this lets me get two dogs homed instead of one. I've still got this. I'll be able to pursue it later. But I've now got to pick two of these three dogs, and you know what? They're all the same, so I'll just go ahead and pick these two right here. Actually, I'll go ahead and take the two outer ones. And I can put them together in a home, or I can put them in different areas. And remember... I'm looking at the ways they could score. Hey, remember the countryside wants a full house? So if I put both of them out here, that could be the two. Now I need three of a different type over here to score nine points by sending them to the countryside forever home. So let's go with that. That was my turn. I did two actions, uh, which was take a dog, take a training card. It could have been two dogs, two training cards. Didn't move anything around. And now it's my opponent's turn. And if I were playing against Jen, she would be looking at her own board with her own dog. She'd have the same options available to her. But my opponent is now represented by this uh, deck of drafting cards. It says, hey, they want to snag the rightmost dog and the rightmost training card. These are gone. So if I was hoping to get a blue hound dog um, or this one, which is worth three points, but it needed all of them in this particular configuration, well, that would have been a bit more work. Doesn't matter. They're gone now. And that's all the AI is doing, replicating what another player would do, taking two resources that maybe I wanted every turn, just like Jen probably would have done. So anyway, then a new dog comes out. It's another hound, all righty. And a uh, new training card comes out. And now, before it comes back to me, I move one step forward on the round tracker. Now, when you're playing a multiplayer game, players are just racing. Because as soon as somebody finishes their seventh training card, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Um... But in the solo game, it's a little bit different. There is a fixed timer. I'm going to play for at least eight rounds. But if I wanted to, I could play for nine or ten rounds, but I'd start losing points the longer I go. So it's a fixed number of rounds I'm playing rather than racing against somebody else to you know do the most training as fast as possible. Plus, also, because I moved this forward and filled this little space in, that is a reminder that I now have to pick one of the seven uh, breed types and put it into to one of these seven scoring spots. And that means that animal is going to be uh, scored in a certain way. Uh, let's see, I've already started to work on the little pink Sharpay types. So since I've already rehomed two of them and I've got another one on my board, maybe I should start really thinking about trying to do well by them. So I've got to pick one of seven spaces to put these in. Now, if I were playing a multiplayer game, all the breeds would have just been placed randomly um, into the most training, most rehomed, and most different homes. And these would be three metrics we're competing on. Uh, whoever um, got the most, say, oh, uh, huskies in uh, in training w would have, or you know, who, who is still training the most huskies would have gotten three points. Whoever's training the most pink uh, Sharpay types or Shih Tzu types would have gotten one point because these were just randomly chosen. And all the different breeds were chosen on these three metrics and were competing to do the best in having them in training, having them rehomed, or having them in a variety of homes. But we're playing in this version of the game where right now I'm going to not randomly but purposely choose how I want to score these little pups. And if I think I'm really going to make a push on them, I've already got three on me, what I could do is say, hey, um, dogs rehomed. If at the end of the game, I've got more of these rehomed than, say, uh, um, you know, boxers and hound dogs combined, um, then I will score five points. So I'm basically creating a puzzle for myself as I go. I'm feeling like I've got a good... I've already rehomed some of these. Let's keep on pushing the agenda of rehoming them and make sure I rehome them more than I do some other breeds of dogs. Okay, so that was the end 
of the first round. And remember, in a multiplayer game, none of this stuff happens. You're playing until somebody has done seven trainings, and all of the scoring for all the breeds has already been randomly assigned as part uh, as part of setup. Okay. It is now my second turn. Once again, I've got two actions, and I would definitely like to get this little pup rehomed as fast as possible because I've given myself a goal of rehoming a lot of them. Unfortunately, there aren't any more of them out there, so I'm going to be trying to grab them as fast as I can, too. So, what's next? Remember, I've got two actions. I'd like to get some more dogs to rehome them. And, um, let's see, one thing, the suburbs, remember, they had a very specific, they want blue, green, and yellow dogs, plus one more for seven points. So that means in this game, all other things being equal, blue, green, and yellow dogs are a little bit more valuable because this card was out. There is a blue and a yellow dog. I could go on ahead and grab those. Um, let's go on ahead and start by grabbing a blue, by grabbing an old blue, the hound dog. And I've got to put it somewhere on my grid. And in the meantime, another one comes out. Oh, it's another orange, which are the cute little schnauzers. Okay, so where is this going to go? Remember, if I put them on any of these spaces, I actually uh, trigger an action. But what I'm really trying to do is set them up to score these or potentially these if I could grab them. So I'm going to have two different types. This wants two of the same in the step pattern. And by the way, I should say these are all mirrorable and flippable. You don't have to have them in exactly this layout. You could have them stepping like that, etc. So, where do I want to put this? Well, I can look over here in the future and see that, hey, there's this thing about having, um, you know, two and two in a stair-stepping kind of thing. Let's go on ahead and see if I can pull that off. Although the problem is, I would need another pink and another blue. There aren't any out here. Now, there are two oranges. But remember, I might be able to get one of those oranges, but not the other one, depending on what my opponent does, because they're going to snag stuff, just like a human player would. So, where am I going to put this? Hmm. Let's see. Well, you know what? Okay, if I uh, what I could do is I could put it over here, and that means I trigger this action, which means hey, one of the other dogs. Uh, I can't. It can't be this one. It can't be the one that triggered the action. But one of the other dogs could swap. So I could swap, and now I've got an orange. And then for my second action, I could get the other orange. Wasn't I clever? I think I was. Uh, let's see. So a new one is going to come over here. There's another yellow. And now I've got a choice. If I put this here, 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 or here, if I do, if I do this, I will move this away so that I can unlock this power again, as an example. Plus, I'll have two of the same type in this pattern, which means I can score my second training card. That all looks pretty good. Let's place it here so that we can move this. Now, this could go anywhere um, along here. It could even jump over other dogs. I'm just going to go ahead and put this kind of of central, but I'm mostly clearing the space up again if I needed it. And now I have scored this. This says, hey, um, don't score any points, but both dogs involved in this training get rehomed. And again, they could go to the same place or different places. So, um, Right off the bat, I'm kind of inclined to put two here because then just one more orange or one more pink will score me nine points in the countryside. So let's go with that. All right, that was my second of potentially eight turns when I'm playing solo. And you're probably going to play roughly the same length of game in a multiplayer game too. Okay, so now my opponent says, Hi, I am going to get rid of... No! Not the, the, the Shih Tzu! No! And um, this particularly tough one, this truck training. Okay, so that's that. And that means a new training card comes out. And a new pooch comes out. Okay, another pink one came out. It's fine. And now we have finished the second of eight rounds. And once again, I now have to lock in another scoring uh, animal type. So let's think about this a bit more. Of the remaining six breeds... Well, see, I don't want to put orange in here because I've, I've got an equal number of orange and pinks. So I want to... Uh, I, I could, and I haven't really decided what I'm going to go lighter on. So I'm going to leave those alone. But it wouldn't hurt to go on ahead now that I've got two Shih Tzus out. Well, I wouldn't want them over here because this is saying, hey, well, actually, it kind of makes sense here, right? Because if I've already got Shih Tzus out and about on the uh, board, then I don't want to keep them in training, which is to say at the end of the game, they're still in my grid. So I probably have some other animal, probably the ones I put over here, uh, so I keep him in training uh, for homing later. And that means one that I do want to get out on the board sooner than later. That makes sense. Or I could just go like this, which says, hey, I get an extra point for every orange shih tzu I rehome. Or 
I put it over here, I get two points for every different home that I have rehomed Shih Tzus in. And that might make sense too, because if we look at the board again over here, We've uh, got, right, I maybe want to put one more Shih Tzu here, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull off a second full house. So I'm sorry, or, you know, or, you know more uh, Schnauzers. So I would probably want to put at least one Schnauzer in the city because the city wants unique animals. You never want to put the same type of, uh, of dog in the city. The suburbs don't particularly want, well, the suburbs don't want Schnauzers, but I could still put a Schnauzer here as the wild. And so let's go on ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to try and get Schnauzers in each of these different areas. Because if that, this, because I put that here now, if I get a Schnauzer now in the city, the suburbs, and the foster home, that will be two, four, six, eight points for me at the end of the game. So let's go with that. And I've given myself another goal. Okay, um, we are now on to my third turn. And once again, I'm going to do two actions. I'm definitely going to snag this because once I get it trained, this will have triggered the countryside. And I will have three of them rehomed, which means if I only rehome, say, one husky and one collie, you know, the red and the blue, then this would already be a winner for my five points. So, where am I going to put this on the grid, knowing that I could trigger other effects, knowing what I'm trying to hit? Um, so I could just go like this, and then because if I could get a orb like this, or because then if I could get another blue here or here, then I would complete this. I'd get this into there. So that makes sense. Let's go ahead and just put that right there. And then a new one comes out. Be blue. It is not. Oh, it's the... Uh, the... The little Frenchies, the purples are, those are the French Bulldogs, right. And the yellow ones are the Boxers, if I recall correctly. Okay, so I've grabbed, done one of my two actions, I get one more. Huh. Well, none of these are going to help me with this, so I should probably go on ahead and get some more training, because they're a source of points, and you know I can't rehome without them. And looking at this, you know I could be trying to go for a different collection in a vertical or horizontal line. But here's the deal. I know once I'm done with this, I'm probably going to send the pink off, which means there'll still be a blue left over here, which means this I'd still be in a good position to finish this one later. So my second action, I'm going to give myself another training card. Okay, boom. And uh, then my buddy says, hi, I'm going to take uh, that boxer and that training card. Okay, whoops. No, we don't draw from there. We replace those. Show me blue. I'm not looking. I'm not peeking, I promise. Nope, not a blue. Okay. But hey, another schnauzer. And I want to get schnauzers all over the place. Cool. Alrighty. And we're moving on to the third. I now have to lock in my third dog type. And remember, this only happens in the solo game. In the uh, multiplayer, this is the biggest difference. In the multiplayer game, they've all been pre-assigned. So you know players are competing to do the best in the different breeds and seeing how everybody else is doing. Here, I am competing against myself by creating problems for myself. So let's go ahead. Let's. I talked about this before. Let's take the Huskies and say, hey, you know what? I am not going to rehome Huskies as much because I want to do the, uh, the Shih Tzus uh, more than the Huskies plus something else to get those five points. I haven't seen any Huskies. I mean, they are going to eventually show up, but for now, we're saying the Red Huskies are left out in the cold, literally, but that's kind of where they like it. Okay, so my turn again. I'm doing two actions and... I'm feeling like I should go on ahead and grab this schnauzer because I want to get schnauzers in each of the other areas. But how am I going to place it? It doesn't help me with any of these. Um, yeah, and pretty much all the training cards are always, you know, picking two. So this is me introducing a third breed to the board. So I'm really kind of thinking more long term how I might go about this. Like, uh, for instance... Well, if I know I put another blue here, right, and then eventually this goes away, I could put it here with an eye towards, um, you know, maybe, oh, no, 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 towards, yeah, doing this one, which it wants a blue and then a orange and then another blue here. And if I get a blue here, later on I can put something here to make this blue sly over here and finish that one. I like that. And in fact, I like that so much. Let's go on ahead and snag this so the uh, automated drafter does not snag it themselves. Okay. So, and by the way, I am supposed to fill these up immediately as I go instead of waiting till the end of my turn. So after I'd taken the orange, I could have seen what else I could have grabbed. All righty, and then we've got, oh, a big one there. And now my opponent says hi. Oh, not to, uh, this time, just taking dogs and leaving the training cards behind. Okay, 
Show me a blue. I'm looking for blue. There we go, baby. And we're moving on to the next round. So once again, I've got to make a choice. Okay. Uh, I have not grabbed. I'm going to say purple plus red. I want to have fewer purple plus reds rehomed than I have pinks. So I've given myself another goal. And you better believe I'm snagging this. And boom, that's my first action, whereupon I am completing this. Uh, that is one point for me, and I'm rehoming one. I'm rehoming this. So now I've got three rehomed pink, and I've got nine points for the countryside. Boom. That is what I wanted to see. And I think I know what I'm going to do next. All right, so I'm going to grab another dog. Uh, um, I kind of have a vest. I'm less interested in the uh, French Bulldog, so I'm not going to take the purple. I'll go ahead and take one of these yellows and maybe get another yellow later if it sticks around. And I'm going to put this yellow here, which then activates this power that says, hey, slide it over here. And just like that, I've completed this. Because remember, you can mirror things or flip them if you want. So I've completed this. No points, but I'm rehoming two of these dogs. I'm definitely rehoming this. Let's go ahead and put this here and put a blue here. And now I just need a yellow and a green, and I've got seven points for the suburbs. And now I've got two schnauzers, so that worked very nicely. That is uh, pretty, pretty good. Okay, and then another dog comes out. That was a nice little onesie, twosie, threesie combo. Another French bulldog. And uh, the AI says, okay, bye-bye French bulldogs. All right, they must... I mean, and, you know, a human player very likely would have done that. Would have said, hey, two of the same type. I mean, you always need her trying to match colors, so somebody would have totally grabbed those two. And it just so happens that's exactly what the AI did. Go figure. All righty. And then we've got some more pups coming back. And, oh, there's a husky. And there's a collie. And we move on. And so now I've got to lock another thing in. All righty, so... Uh, the one that I'm trying to, uh, what, you know, just for everyone I put in a foster home. I've already put a blue in. I'm probably going to try and put another blue in. Let's say, let's do that over there. So the hound dogs. Every hound dog I rehome is worth a point to me. Fine. And I am up again. And basically, I'm almost out of time, folks. I've just got two more rounds, and then I will... Well, I have a choice. I can go into final scoring where I am, and, and when you're playing you know, multiplayer, you're trying to get the best score. In the solo game, you've got this uh, little you know scoreboard that you're trying to do well on, whether you're a rising star or stuff like that. And the interesting thing is, I don't have to stop at eight rounds. I can push to nine or ten rounds. But if I push to nine rounds to try to get a little bit more done, I lose four points for my final score. And if I push to ten rounds, I lose eight points for my final score. All righty. So... Um, right. Where am I going? What am I doing? I do see two greens. And if you can grab a pair, that helps you with just about everything. So where would I put these? Knowing that I could potentially... Oops, I bumped my camera. I could potentially get this. How about I go like this, hoping to get this yellow over here to complete that one a little bit later on. And again, I, I took them one at a time, so I could have seen if something else came up. But if you can get a pair, you want to get a pair. Alrighty, so that was that. I am done. My opponent says, oh, bye-bye. They love those French Bulldogs. Bye-bye that training card. Okay, and um, boom. What am I doing now? Well, this is interesting. i got to say dogs that are going to stay behind in... Um, yeah, you know, on my grid at the end of the game. And I want more of one breed than the other so I could score three points. So I've got two green, but remember, I am planning on... Well, I'm planning on bringing both a green and a yellow up here so that I can finish this. Which means I might be leaving... Or currently, there's a green and a blue being left. I'm going to say greens. More greens than yellows. So, um, you know, I, I, I've locked in. I mean, I don't have to do the last one because there's no place else I could put that. So that's my final scoring options. And I've got uh, two more turns to do it in. So, let's go. Let's go on ahead and grab this yellow, right? And score that immediately. So that is two points, and one of these dogs is rehomed. And I need to think about what makes no sense to leave. Okay, I'm going to rehome this green. Fine. There we go. Okay. 
And I've left that because if I can get that green and that there, I could these two will score off each other again. So that was my first. And I'm almost there to the suburbs. And for my second, what's more important? I'll go ahead and grab the green. And I will put it here. And if I had time, if I could grab that card, I'd score. But we'll just have to wait and see if I get lucky. And my opponent does not take it. Okay. And they say, hi, I'm going to take this and this. Okay, no problem. Now, I should say, oops, yeah. I, I wasn't going for that one. That's fine. This one is interesting. This I had to have two of the same breed with a blank space in between them. So anyway, so that's what they took. I am fine with that. We slide over, and the last one goes in place. And that's it, folks. I'm done. I've played my eight rounds, unless I want to keep pushing. If I keep pushing, I'm going to lose four points. But... I will. It's worth it because I'm about to. I need one more to score seven points for the suburbs. So I am going to push. Um. Wait, no, I'm not pushing. This is my last round, and then I have to decide if I'm keep going. So I've done seven rounds. This is my last round. You know what I'm doing? I am snagging this as my first action because it's immediately finished. Uh, one point two dogs. So we get a yellow over here, and just like that, we have scored for the suburbs. And I can't take the blue because it wasn't part of that trick. I want to keep more reds than yellows, or more greens than yellows. So I'll take a yellow. And where am I going to put this? One in the city is one point. One of, uh, you know, basically the foster homes, it's one per. No matter what they are, they're always a point. If I put it over here and I could get more yellows, the second yellow would be three and then um, four and six and nine. So, but I think this is it. I think this is as far as I go. So in that case, it doesn't really matter. Alrighty, and then my opponent, I mean, I'm just finishing out in case I want to keep going. They take that and they take the hound dog. Alrighty. And now I've got to make my decision. Am I going to stop or am I going to keep going? Folks, you've made it this far. Let's just go ahead and say I will not keep going because I'd lose four points and then subsequently eight points. So what is my final score? Well, the game comes with handy-dandy scoring sheets, so let's go through this. Um, my completed training cards. I got one, two, three, four, five. Not great. I was not going for the big hard ones, which could be worth a much bigger source of points. So it was again, one, two, th uh, three, four, five. Five points. All righty. Next up, my home cards which are these up here. One point for the city. I complete this, so seven, plus seven, that's eight, plus nine is 17. That's a bit better. Okay, now the commendations, all of this stuff up here. Did I have more pinks rehomed than uh, purples and reds? Yes, so that is five points. Did I have more um, greens in training than yellows? Yes, I did, so that's three. How many blues did I rehome? None? No, one. One. So only one, and um, I got two points for each unique place I put schnauzers. So I only put them in two spots. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And finally, when you're playing solo, you get deductions. If I had kept pushing, I would have lost four or eight points, but I didn't. I stopped. Also, because I'm playing on the advanced board, I lose two. If I played on that, because I had access to those extra powers. So because of that, I am at minus two. And the total is not great. 17 plus 13, that's 30. 35, 34, 33. That is 33 points. And if we check the cheat sheet for a solo game, 33 points is a rising star. It's okay, but I am not a great trainer. So I think I need to go back to training school myself. But folks, that should hopefully give you a quick idea of what Forever Home is all about. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.